Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Luke. So the other day, there was some chatter in the Kenny Beats Twitch about Live Enhancement Suite, and Kenny said he needed a tutorial on it, so I decided to take that as my inspiration for what video I'm going to make today. So Live Enhancement Suite is an extension to Ableton that's aimed at cleaning up your workflow, and it does this in a couple main ways. One is that it adds these new menus on top of Ableton to where when you right click on your uh, effect rack, you immediately have access to a short list of plugins that you use on the regular. And this is fully customizable so that you only have what you want. And what that allows you to do is add a plugin straight onto your rack from this right click menu that you don't even have to mess with the side menu or search for your plugins at all. Another feature is a MIDI specific menu that you have access to when inside the piano roll that has scales and chords stored in it that you can bring in. And finally, Live Enhancement Suite also adds a series of like 15 new keyboard shortcuts that you can use to solve some various accessibility problems that you might be running into. So before we get back into practical uses of LES, let's talk about how to get it up and running on your computer first. So here's your first step, which is the download link, which I'll put right in the description for you lazy folk. Once you've selected the download link that corresponds to your operating system, you're probably going to need to allow your computer to install it because of the security settings. So at least on Mac, you're gonna to want to say yes to the dialog box that pops up here in your security and privacy tab to go ahead and allow it to get fully installed. And after it's installed, it should show up in your applications folder and you're gonna to wanna to open it. And once it's running, you should see the icon in your top bar. And then you can check to see if it's active by going into Ableton and clicking on your audio rack to see if the menu comes up. And the way that you access the menu is by double right clicking. So now we need to talk about how to customize your menu to make it exactly how you want it to be. To do that, go ahead and click the LES icon in your top bar and click configure menu. And now this dialog box represents the menu that you have within Ableton. So here's your um, default instruments and VSTs and everything that it comes preloaded with. They're just assuming this is what you use. So let's say I don't use drum racks and I'll delete drum rack from here and it won't show up in my menu. So you can see there's two lines of text that correspond to each plugin that's in the menu. The first one is the title that you'll see. And the second one is the search query that will have to happen in the Ableton search in order to locate your plugin. And the two slashes here denote that it's a subgroup within effects. So when you mouse over effects, then another EQ subgroup will pop up. So let's say I don't use EQ3 and I want to add ProQ3 to um, the EQ subgroup. So I'm going to type the first line of text for my title. And the same thing because that's what it's actually called for um, it to be found in the search function. So now that I've added ProQ3, I'll go ahead and add a compressor group, Ableton compressor, and I'll add a glue comp. And auto pan is not a go-to plugin for me, so I'm gonna delete that. And then serum, I'll take that. Utility is a great one. I'll probably just add Omnisphere here to instruments real quick. Then once you're done editing your menu, go back up to the icon and hit reload. Then we can check to see if our plugins were added correctly. So yes, it'll add Omnisphere even though I don't want it. Now let's see, ProQ3, there it is, excellent. So I think this is a great way to save time that you might spend over here searching for plugins and stuff. Recently I organized them by color, but still to have an even shorter list of like all of my go-to stuff um, underneath this menu is super convenient. So now let me show you some of the MIDI functionalities within the piano roll. So first off, if you hold the tilde key, it only takes one click to put in a MIDI note and you're immediately resizing it off the bat. Rather than without this feature, you have to double click to put a MIDI note that is not the size that you want it and then resize it again. Um, this basically just adds like a better version of draw mode, which draw mode I already think is like pretty much a nuisance as it is. Never use it. And when it turns on accidentally, I get pissed. 
So again, that's hold the tilde key and then just one click and you're already resizing a note. So that's pretty cool. Then on top of that, you get access to another menu when you're inside your piano roll. Um, Mac users need to hold down shift to access the scales and chords menu. I think on PC, you don't need to hold shift. It's just another um, double right click inside your piano roll. So the way that you access these uh, scales and chords is again, shift, double right click for Mac, mouse over a scale that you want. Let's go Dorian. And in order to activate it, you pick the root note that you want to see the scale on from. So like, let's go to C3. Now, when I click here, this scale doesn't show up. And the reason for that is that you need like a certain length of scale. So if I, uh, or excuse me, a length of MIDI note. So if I hold tilde again and put in a longer note, the scales will show up. So make sure it's like a decently long note, otherwise it won't show up. And the same goes for chords. So again, I'm going to pick the key that I want to start the chord on, tilde click and release, and I get my F major seven. Now, one issue that I've noticed is that, um, at least on Mac, I'm not sure I've kind of seen this done a few different ways. The Ableton menu shows up anyway, and I haven't found a way to disable it yet, or um, on the other hand, maybe I could find a way to change the LES menu to only come up on like a double left click or something, but I haven't figured that out yet. I'm probably gonna reach out to um, the developers to see if they have any tips on that because their, um, their manual online doesn't mention anything about that yet, but it still works. It's just kind of annoying to have this big menu behind it and you don't know if you're like accidentally gonna click that. The way that I access my chords and scales beforehand are just in folders over on my side menu and the way that they get drug in with MIDI clips is less convenient than this. So moving forward, I'm probably gonna be using the chords and scales function of LES more frequently than using uh, my folders full of chords and scales. So the last important feature from Live Enhancement Suite to cover are the keyboard shortcuts that you gain. So there's like a list of 15 of them on the manual site for LES, but I'm just gonna cover a few um, interesting ones that I think solve some problems that I've seen before. So I bet this has happened to you before where you decide that you wanna change up your pattern, whether it's MIDI or audio on one side. So like in one couple bar phrase, you decide that um, your drums are better this way. And then you duplicate them but it just gets pasted on top of what you have on the other side. Well, one of the hotkeys or uh, shortcuts that gets added is that if you, ha if you include Alt, so like usually you would do Control D or Command on um, Mac. If you add Alt to Command D, it will effectively delete what's here and then duplicate it. So watch. Let's say I even had nothing over here to prove the point. Command option D. It duplicates exactly what is here. And the same thing happens with copy and paste. So if I do command C and then command option V, it pastes absolutely what is there rather than just adding it on top. So I like that one. And the other one that I really like is like, let's say I have my, uh, let's say I pull in my master chain and then all of the plugin windows open at once. I can hit command option W to close all of them at once. So one last thing that I'll add, you can disable shortcuts that are annoying to you. Like if you accidentally use them and you don't wanna be using them, you can go into configure settings now, like one of the hotkeys is that if you double tap zero, it'll delete instead of deactivate. 
And that might be useful for if you have a keyboard that doesn't have a delete key, but I have a delete key, so it's not even necessary for me to have that shortcut. So here it is right here, double zero to delete, and there's a one next to it. I just need to replace that with a zero, and that will um, deactivate that shortcut from uh, happening ever. So I'll do that, and then you can um, replace any ones with zeros or zeros with ones if you want to activate things and then just go ahead and hit reload and then all those settings will um, take effect for you. So I'm sure there's something in here with an LES that can clean up your workflow a little bit and I think that clutter and minimizing clutter is something that is getting more and more important to me um, as I'm realizing that my workspace and just how much I have to work with can affect how effective I am and how much mental space I have for creativity. So I highly recommend trying this out to see if it can speed things up for you or make you feel less cluttered. But regardless of what it takes, I hope you guys are staying creative and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.